With the war over, it's time for us to rebuild, to take stock of our situation, and to return to our roots as explorers. We've recently noticed that a star in an unexplored system near Ferenginar has become unstable. There's nothing to indicate any change to its stellar life cycle, so this is a perfect opportunity for us to chart the system, investigate the star, and improve our understanding of what's happening. I want you to head up this investigation. Find out why this star is suddenly dying, and make sure it isn't going to be a threat to any nearby worlds or systems. Nora Zuval. Let's get started. My preliminary observations show some kind of unknown stellar problem. This unexplored system near Ferenginar is undergoing solar death. Basically, it's as if the star is going out suddenly, but there's no good reason why. We need to get close enough to take some readings and see what we can figure out. Try reducing the gain on your sensors. Initial results don't make any sense. The star's core reactions are failing, but it still has so much mass that it should be conducting fusion. It's as if it suddenly decided that it was no longer going to do hydrogen fusion, just heavier fusion processes. This kind of matter is ejected during corona events. We should be able to collect some with your ship's ram scopes if we head to one of the ejection zones. Results are coming in now. This still isn't making any sense. It's as if the star's life cycle was suddenly accelerated somehow, but it never went through an expansion cycle. There's no good explanation for this yet. Maybe something else in the system caused it. If this is system-wide, we should find evidence of similar problems with nuclear and chemical reactions in the system's gaseous bodies. There's a large amount of gaseous stellar matter further from the star. We should have no trouble checking that hypothesis. This is very strange. Usually nebulae are massive clouds between star systems. Finding a micronebula in a system like this is quite rare. This may be the result of an event such as a cosmic string, shearing through a gas giant and turning it back into particulate matter. I'll need some more readings to know for certain. All the particulate matter will make your ship's sensors unreliable beyond a few kilometers, and shields will be offline. The best we'll be able to do is to check small areas until we get close to something... 
We should head to where the deionized particle density is highest. coming in from the nebula, but those Tholian ships were quite far from home. Unfortunately, they can't give us answers. Looks like there's some heavy ionization on the far side of the nebula, though. As if it's receiving some kind of reflected radiation from one of the gas giants. Unknown vessel. This is Administrator Kumarke. Please provide identification. Welcome to Lucari. Visitors here are rare, but we're always gratified by the chance to meet and exchange information with travelers. I regret that you have arrived at a difficult time. You may have noticed that our home star has become unstable. I'm leading a project to try to reignite the star. 
Unfortunately, we've already suffered severe disruptions, and we have a lot of problems to tackle right now. Yes, we've previously had contact with the Zenkethi and the Ferengi. We've heard a bit about the Deferi and the Breen, but they haven't ever been to our system. Our home world provides for all of our raw material needs, along with a few mining outposts around the asteroid and the gas giant. We've never had a compelling need to engage in space exploration. And now that our sun is going out, we're scrambling everything we've got to see if we can find a solution or a way to evacuate at least a few of our people. I am honored to have the chance to make first contact with your people. My people have had little contact with other species, but that could change if we discover that we have mutual goals and interests. Of course, if our star goes out, this will also be last contact. We have a solar probe ready that contains the booster module that needs to be fired into the star. It's capable of warp two. There's a problem though. The probe's remote navigation systems don't work. All of the interference from the solar flaring and guttering is blocking the signal. Could your ship get a trajectory plot so that we could set a pre-programmed course? evacuate a few people I'm not going to give up but the situation is grim if your people can offer any other help we would welcome it but I just don't see a way to relocate eight billion people in the next few hours my name is Cal Dano looks like I've arrived at the perfect time I'm here to help with the problem with this star I'm a scientist and I have some specialized knowledge that can help. With apologies for the interruption, this is my home star. My people are the ones at risk here. If you have some way to reverse this process, my people should be involved. All right, I'm willing to do so, but it will take me a little while to get a shuttle out there. As you might imagine, things are a little hectic over here right now. You won't be able to get a lock on my ship interior due to the subspace manifolds. I'll go ahead and bring you aboard. Welcome aboard. I'm Cal Dano. You... you moved me here without crossing the intervening space! You have quantum teleportation technology! Yes, we call it a... Transporter. 
It has a limited range, but it's useful for going from surface to ship. Impossible! This, this ship's interior is massive, even though it's no bigger than a shuttle. My ship uses compactified subspace folds. It's bigger on the inside. This is all quite overwhelming. This Caldano person is another stranger from somewhere else. And you're here to help with our dying star? Oh. Yes, I suppose I can see how a star suddenly dying might attract someone's attention. It's an odd coincidence. We'd probably never have met if it weren't for the trouble with the star. My people have never really had any desire to go exploring out there. We've sent a few probes and met a couple of neighbors, but we're happy at home. And we have what we need, so why risk it? I guess this crisis answers that question. The galaxy is bigger than us. And to survive, we need to look past just our own world. It sounds like you have a lot of experience in meeting other kinds of people. Maybe if we survive this, we can take the chance and learn more about each other. To talk about what we might have in common and what we have to offer. What can I do to help? My home is at risk. I want to do something. To be involved in solving this problem. Welcome to my ship. Don't be alarmed. This vessel is from the 31st century, and it has some technology you may not recognize yet. I can assure you, though, that I'm here to help. Correct. I'm associated with a temporal division of, well, let's just say that I'm an ally from the future, and I'm here to save the Lucari Star. No, no, I'm trying to prevent changes. Someone's tampered with this star. It's not supposed to die out here. The Lucari don't disappear today. At least not if we have any say in it. I have some technology that can help, but we'll need to rework it in order to repair the star's fusion processes. What I need you to do is to help me align this matrix to match the star's original spectrum. I'll regulate the device's main power state from this console. Sounds like whoever tried to destabilize the Lucari Star has decided to come knocking. Let's see who. <sighs> They're packing a real wallop. Shields just went down. We have incoming! What are those things? Folians! Keep them away. I need to finish these computations. I have the device shielded in a force field, but I can't deploy it until these Goldians are out of the way. Shields are back online. We shouldn't be able to get any more boarding parties over. Breather. Now I just have to charge the device and prepare it for use. In just a few minutes, it'll propagate a quantum wave shift that should correct the star's stalled fusion process. You should head back to your ship, and I'll send the administrator back home.
device is charging. We're just a few minutes away from repairing the star. Give us the task, you doubt.
save, but the Tholians managed to steal the Tox Uthot while they had my ship webbed. That must have been their plan all along. My data suggests the Tholians use a trilithium warhead to destabilize the star, but the amount of resources needed to build such a weapon makes it inefficient to say the least. No, I suspect somehow they knew I would come here to save this star, and I would bring the Tox Uthot. Fortunately, the Lucari star is safe. However, nobody else will be, as long as the Tholians have that device. They can use it to snuff out or destabilize stars anywhere they want. I have some thoughts on that, but I will need to do some calculations. These events, and the Tox Uthot itself, are tied up in the Temporal Cold War. The Tholians may not care, but by using the Tox Uthot, they risk distorting the timeline by wiping out civilizations that are supposed to survive into the future, such as the Lucari. I'll be in touch. At least now the Lucari will have a promising future. Kaldano is correct. You have preserved our future. My people will be forever grateful. Not to mention my personal gratitude, of course. I think we have a bright future ahead of us, if you'll forgive my play on words. I am eager to see where it leads. Thank you once again. I wish I could ask you about your science, your trade, your society. Well, I suppose there will be time for all of that now that our crisis has been averted. Oh, I think our friend the administrator here is going to need a ride home. Would you mind? If you'll pick her up and take her home, I'll start looking for more data about the Tholian's plans. amount of information about what happened to this star. Thank you for bringing me along. Once we're back in Allied space, I'll take a shuttle home.